Hey, what's up, guys? Happy Saturday. So today, uh, let's take a look at this lead code problem here, uh, number 489, robot room cleaner. Uh, it's very interesting. Like you can call it a design or an interactive problem. So basically, you you there's a ro robot cleaner in the room modeled as a grid. So the room is marked as zero, either one or zero where zero means it's an obstacle, it's a wall, and one means it's a place you can you can go through. And, and then the robot, right? So the robot has a has an interface. The class of robot has an interface. Basically it it can either move, okay? It can either move uh follow the current direction and move to the to the 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 cell that's in front of the current direction, or it can turn left, turn right. You know, turn left means it just go clockwise, uh, counterclockwise by 90 degree, and turn right means it will turn like uh, go going to the clockwise uh, by 90 degree, and then there's a clean. So and it, it just asks you to design an algorithm that the robot can clean all the rooms, the all basically can can clean all the all the ones. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, so this is like a, obviously it's gonna be a DFS, uh, a DFS search, right? Traverse basically at each at each position we're just basically trying to uh, go to all four directions, okay? Right, and then in, in each four directions we try to uh, do do the same thing, right? Until we have traverse to all other ones, okay? Because it says all the uh, all the ones are they're all connected, but the only the only catch here is that you know uh, why this one is a hard problem is that you know uh, we cannot go we cannot go to each direction freely basically as you guys as you can see here so the uh, mm, the robot right will keep going will keep moving to uh, following one direction until it reach, uh, until it hits the uh, a, a block a wall and then we can we can direct the, the, the robot to do something else okay because the reason being is that you know when, when every time when you call a move here okay you have to you have to know what's the current direction because let's say we have a we have cell here let's say this is a cell if the current direction is going up, right, then the when the when we doing doing the move here, the next position will will be here, okay. If the direction is going going to right, the next one the next the move will will move the robot to the right side. Same thing for the down, and and the left, okay. Since we can only move the robot by calling the move method here. That's why we cannot just simply loop through all four directions freely. Basically, we have to we have to uh, do some turns. Let's say basically, you know, let's say uh, the current position is going up. Okay, right. It's so going up. When we call move, of course, the the next position will will uh, will be this one. But if we want to go to if we, now we want to uh, the robot going to the down left or right. We have to keep calling that either turn left or turn right. Okay. Basically, let's assume. Uh, suppose let's see we we always ask the uh, the robots to turn right. So basically, at this moment, right, this is the robot. Uh, assuming the current direction is going up, the next one it can either go go to the right or the left. Let's assume we always uh, go to right. So the, now the next movement will will be uh will be this one. Of course, after calling this turn right, okay, and then if you, then if we want to go down, we have to call turn right again. Then the robot can go down, and then if we call it again, it will, it will go to left, okay. So basically, we have to use this turn right to uh, to move to turn the, the to turn the robot, uh, so that we can go to the next level, the next position. Okay, and. Cool. So that's the that's the first thing, and uh, and the second difference is the uh, you know for the 
traditional DFS search, I mean, we can just go to all directions to, uh, at, at, I mean, at the same time, right? Basically, we can go up, we can go left, we can go right, and we, we can go, go down, okay? Basically, we, we can just go at all, the, all the directions freely, right? And we don't have to worry about how can we come back here, okay? Because once we go down there, when everything's done, we, it's done because we have another loop. We have another like uh, branch that's go to the left, go, go down and go right. But in this case, you know, since we have a, we have a single robot, right? So the, since it's a single robot, let's say the first time if the robot's uh, going up, let's say it goes up and up, okay? So when it's reached here, let's say there, there's a wall here, okay? So let's say the robot stop at here. It cannot go move anywhere, okay? Then at this moment, right, I mean, it has to come back. Basically, it's like a backtracking mechanism because, you know, it's a sing since it's a single robot, once it goes to a, to the uh, one direction, right, it has to has a way to come back because the uh, our recursion function cannot take the, the robot back. So the robot has to has to move itself back. Okay. To uh, I mean, so that the robot can move back to the previously uh, previously uh, state. So how can the robot move move back to the previously state? Then we have to utilize this this few uh, uh, built-in solutions. Basically, let's say for example, if the robot as as this position uh, and is facing up, right? So how can the robot come go back to the previously state? So Basically, the robot has to turn, has to go basically turn right and then turn right. Okay, now the robot is facing down. Okay, and then we call a move, right? Now the robot is, 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 uh, is back in, it's back to the previous, to the same position, but at the opposite direction because uh, now the robot is, is, is facing down. So, in order to, uh, to turn it to the previously direction which is going up we have to call either turn left or turn right tw uh, two more times right then the robot is like it's back at this position which is facing up okay then the robot can can then go go right right go down go left yeah basically that's the two difference right comparing with the uh, normal like DFS template other than that, I think everything should be pretty much the same. Okay. Okay, cool. So let's try to code these things here. And so basically, let's define the go back method. Okay, let's define the go back helper functions here. And like I said, the robot will will turn turn right okay twice then robot dot turn right twice and then the robot will move okay and then the robot will turn right two more times to get back to the original direction okay so that's the the go back helper function here and then we're gonna have like a DFS uh, sorry, the backtrack. Okay. I'm gonna call it backtracking. Backtrack. So, like I said, the backtrack will have like an X and Y, right? That's a coordinates, and what and the direction, right? Because we need the current direction so that we we know which direction the the, the robot the robot is facing. Okay, cool. And now. Hmm. Same thing, same thing, we need to define the, the directions here. But keep in mind here, so here the, the sequence of the direction matters. Since we're like rotating the, we're turning the, the robots, I, I mean clockwise. Like I said, the first one is is, is, is facing up, which is the uh, minus one, zero, okay? And the second one, right, since we're do, going to use a for loop to, to turn the, the robots, right? So the next one will be, will, will be going to the right side, which will be the zero, 1, okay? 
and the third one is going down, which is the one, zero, okay, and the last one is it's going to the left. Left one is zero, minus one, okay. Remember, so the sequence here does matter here, okay, and yeah, and other than that, you know, just uh, we just do a backtrack, right? Backtrack, uh, either zero, zero, zero. Basically, the zero means uh, like facing down, right? Facing up, right? Uh, I, we use the, the the index to represent its direction. Like zero means facing up, one means uh, facing uh, facing right, and then two facing down, three facing left. And we can start at actually this zero zero. We can either start I think we start at any position because it didn't. Uh, it, all it says is the robot's initial position will always be in an accessible cell. So uh, we're assuming we always start from zero, zero. Actually, starting starting point doesn't really matter. Okay. So now, and we have a backtrack here, right? And uh, yes, of course, we also need like uh, a scene, right? Set to, to record uh, which cell we have been visited before. Cool. So we have a backtrack here, and uh, uh, so, uh, and then the starting point is the uh, we have a scene dot at right uh, zero zero because at the at the first at the beginning we uh, we start from zero zero. So we have a, a robot, right? Uh, clean. Okay. We every time we we have a backtrack here, we do a clean here, and then now we we just need to uh, keep moving, right? We try to move at the current position with the current di direction, and then we and then we will be trying to turn it turn it right uh, clockwise. So the way we're doing it, we're gonna have an I in range four. That's how we uh, calculate the next direction. So the new direction will be what? It will be the current direction, uh, the direction plus i mod by by four. Okay. Basically, since it's like a clockwise, if the current direction is three, right? The next one will be facing up, which will be three plus uh, uh, three plus plus one okay so because it's starting from zero right so the first one is always the first direction is always following the current direction okay and then the next one will be a uh, 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 plus one plus two plus three okay and now the new X right the new X will be what will be the direction directions dot uh, new direction uh, zero okay that's a new X because we have the direction here, right? And the Y is one, okay? And if, right, so if the new X and new Y is not in C, okay? And what? And the robot can move, right? So. So this move here, it means that with the current direction, if the robot can move forward, right? Because at the beginning, the di we're facing up, right? We're facing up means, so basically we're, what we're checking here is uh, at the current position, can the robot moving up, right? So if it can, then we just, uh, we just, uh, what? We just do a backtrack, right? We do a backtrack and the new, X and new Y and the new direction. Okay. And then after that, since like I said, we are, we're going to try to go to all four directions. Okay. That's what, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a robot dot turn right. Okay. It's basically every time when we have a, the current directions, we turn right so that the next loop will give us the next uh, direction. Uh, clockwise okay
yeah, and here, I mean, before doing the backtrack here, we need to add, right? We need to add the uh, the new position to the scene set so that it, it won't be processed again, okay? Okay, so, yeah, but again, like, like I said, right? Like I said, so once we are finishing this backtracking here, right? Once this thing is done, we need to, uh, we need to go back to the previously state state. Okay, so that's why we have to do a go back here to call it. Because basically, every time when we move the robot to a new direction, right, uh, we, we do a go back. This is what how we do a backtracking. Like I said, we have to go back to the previous state so that so that the next for loop, the next for loop will have will have the same initial state. Okay, if, because if we don't do a go back, let's say here after uh, going after the robot move here, the robot is at this position, okay. And if we don't do go back, we we just do a move. It, uh, the, but our purpose is to go from this position, go up, and then come back here, and then go right, okay. That's why we need to, to call go back every time when we have a like a move, a move function here, move action. Yeah, and. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that should just, just do it. Yeah, and, and after that, I, every time we have a valid position, right? As you guys can see, so here we don't have a, like a range check, you know, for the regular DFS, uh, like template, we do a, if the new X is within the range, but since at this moment, for this problem, we don't have a, the information for the room at all. All we have is the robot.move. Basically, this robot move, it's, is helping us to, to to check. So this thing is equivalent to a like the if the new X is in the range of O. Uh, uh, new X, uh, M and N, something like that. And also, uh, if if the new X and the new Y. Uh, is equal to one, basically, right? Basically, this robot that move is doing all these things for us because we don't have the information of the room itself. All we have is the robot.move. <clears throat> Basically, we're, so, so that's why uh, we're using a move here. That's the only way we can know if the new X and new Y is something that is a valid next position. Okay. Okay, cool. So I think, let's see. Yeah. So how about the time and space complexity, right? So as you guys can see, at each at each cell, we do a four direction check, right? So basically, we're gonna have like a four. So the time will be what the O of four to the power of uh, like you know. Uh, Let's say I think it's the power of the the number of the the the, the ones, okay? Because at each of the position one here, of, of n four and the power of n. I think the n is the number number of ones, okay? And the space space is like O of n. Yeah. Yeah, something like this. Cool. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we haven't <laughs> we haven't run the code yet. Let's see if this thing really works. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, add. Okay. Yeah, I have to approve. I have to show you guys. This this code actually works. Otherwise, what am I doing here? Okay. Uh, Twenty rooms were not cleaned. Okay. Uh, so there's something wrong with this code here. Let's see. We have a set add. Okay. Hmm. 
new direction. Okay, let's let me clean this uh, this code here. This drawing. Mm. New direction, new x, new y. Okay. Uh, new direction. Okay. D plus I. And the robot move. Scene add. Okay. Robot backtrack. Go back. Turn right. Uh, I think here, yeah, this this place here, x plus, yeah, y plus. Okay, cleaned all rooms. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's yeah. That's it for this problem. Yeah, basically we're just utilizing the the normal like DFS uh, Trevor DFS search template, but since the, we have we only have a single robot, and the robot cannot freely go to any directions, we have to utilize the uh, the robots function, uh, the robots uh, interface API to move the robots basically to to either go back to go to the next direction or or come come back to the previously state. Other than that, it's just a, a normal DFS template. Cool. I think that's pretty much it is for this problem. Yeah. And thank you so much for watching the video, guys. And stay tuned. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.